Act of Aggression is Eugen System's next game after last year's war game Red Dragon, and it's a very, very different beast. Act of Aggression goes back to Eugen's previous Act of War, which itself harkens back to a genre of fast-paced, competitive, late 90s RTS games that actually lasted quite a long time until the past five years or so. The marketing pitch here is that this game is filling the gap that the old Command & Conquers had left, but if you remember Command & Conquer for its cheesy cutscenes or catchy soundtracks, then I am sorry to admit that neither of those are here. That's because the primary inspiration here is 2003's much more doldrum Command & Conquer Generals, which had a campaign that was as lifeless and uninteresting as the multiplayer was demanding, intense, and in-depth. Particularly with that zero-hour expansion pack, it was really good stuff that for some reason flew under the competitive gaming radar. Anyways, those are the footsteps and the trade-offs that Active Aggression follows. You have three quasi-realistic near-future factions who face off in these ridiculously unrealistic battles that are less about thinking strategically so much as they're about seeing who can mash out the bigger tank rush first. I've never managed to reach the insane level of multitasking dexterity it takes to be actually good at this genre, but I've always enjoyed giving it an honest try. At least the campaigns are usually good for a few cheap thrills. US forces under a convoluted military conspiracy is leading to a wealthy cartel launching a separatist nation in Mexico. Oh no! So you have a US army that focuses on heavy tanks and overwhelming artillery, a cartel of mercenaries who use far-fetched sci-fi equipment that hits hard but breaks easy, and a chimera faction of Europeans who fill the role of the intermediary between the two. But between the three, the cartel is really the only one where some creativity shines through. Railgun turrets and stealth tanks feel like the requisite old futurist CNC style, but a few items there, like the life insurance unit upgrade that refunds a portion of a unit's cost on their death, is just the kind of dark humor and creative design that the majority of this game is sorely missing. It's a tepid mishmash between the over-the-top streamlined spirit of classic RTS and the much more expansive and quite slow, serious pause time strategy of their previous war games. Aggression features a unit count that's certainly smaller than their previous game's 1,200 different clickables, but is still a good deal higher than what you usually see in this kind of sortie, thanks to all these upgrades you can invest in that alter units for different situations. You've actually got a pretty complex and interesting arsenal, and it makes those three factions hard to generalize, but it's also a very messy balance. It breaks away from the simple rock-paper-scissors exchange of classic RTS into something that's much more complicated, hard to learn, and hard to keep up with once it's all happening in motion in front of you. It may be biting off more than it can chew. With combat that goes by this fast, it's pretty frustrating how everyone moves and shoots really, really slowly. There's a lot of dead time because of that. The pathfinding AI makes units react a little unreliably, sometimes unpredictably, which means there's not a lot of room for micro-movements here. Sliding a tank battalion in and out of cover will make the difference between life and death, but I'd be pretty surprised if there are fancier moves to learn. The problems behind this game are simple. It's an honest attempt at a classic genre that could have turned out well, but the whole launch package just seems like it was pushed out before it was ready. Look at the software provided to reviewers. A week before launch, we got a separate client launcher for the campaign only, and were given the same multiplayer beta client as everyone else. Meanwhile, the whole interface itself was scheduled to change on launch day, and they actually did improve it quite a lot, but most of my time with this game was spent with an interface that's now obsolete, and that just shows that they didn't have it ready in time. A lot of it feels missing, like a proper tutorial for one. The campaign skips over a few critical steps about hotkeys and the interface that you're better off learning on Eugen's website, as well as story details that make these incomprehensible Call of Duty cutscenes make any sense at all. In fact, the campaign doesn't really feel like it has much of a purpose in the first place. It doesn't entertain, nor does it help you learn the game. Besides skipping a much-needed starting level tutorial, it also stacks you against an incredibly brutal rubber banding AI that materializes tanks out of the fog wherever you're not looking, while also locking out units and buildings that are critical to learn for the multiplayer. There's no diversity to your objectives, and there's not really anything interesting going on in the story. You're better off learning the game by playing a few skirmish matches against an easy AI, because it's far, far better as a multiplayer game. And it actually can be a pretty cool one once you get over the learning curve and adjust to its quirks, but unfortunately the multiplayer lobbies already look like they're drying up. 
Which is a shame, because active aggression has some really cool ideas in there. Like the POW system that has you trading battlefield survivors for resources, which can be a reliable way to gather up the last bit of money you need for a game-breaking super weapon. It's a nice way of intensifying matches the longer they last, since a loser who can manage to scoop up survivors quickly could still turn that lead around. I explaining aggression's strengths is complicated, but its problems are simple. Another one is how most of the game is in black and white. Once you zoom out all the way, you see the game through this drone-style IR camera that washes away the color and detail on everything, but this is the superior camera angle. The next level of zoom is too close to tell what's going on on these very big maps, yet the next notch above that zooms it super far out and drowns the colors out of everything. The advantages of the greater screen space easily outweigh your color blindness, though, since overcoming it is a skill in and of itself. And by that I mean you just have to learn the silhouettes, and have great short-term memory, because this game's barely realistic art style means that units and portraits oftentimes just look way too similar. This isn't as big an issue for playing Cartel, but an enormous issue for playing the US Army, where the workhorse of your units are different versions of the Striker APC, which is basically going to be a grey cube at that level. Even though some Strikers are for artillery, some are for anti-tank, they're all just going to look like grey cubes and blend in with everything else on the field, just like the buildings. This is a problem that's going to affect every level of players except those at the tippy top, those who are willing to play it enough to recognize and memorize unit silhouettes. And the sad thing is that those guys are probably going to have a good time with this game. But Active Aggression is not going to be able to sustain itself as a serious competitive RTS in its current state, and that's why I would recommend staying away from it, but only for now. Not forever. There is a good strategy game in there somewhere, but it needs work. It needs polishing most of all, but also some core design tweaks to lower the skill floor and clean up the picture on the screen, which they've already done by making the interface so different during a quick update. It's just not snappy, quick, and reactive enough to feel tight, and it also seems like there's way too much going on at any given moment. So hold back for now, but keep an eye on it for the next six months or so. After a big patch or expansion, they might be able to turn this thing around. Kind of like Zero Hour itself. But until then, the old school strategic thrills that are here just might not be worth the effort it takes to get to them. Unit is under attack. <laughs>